y'all. Sorry about the bouncy on the camera again. Hopefully the angle I've got going on here allows you to see what I'm doing fairly well. So this is the beginning of part three of the Dragon Scales Cup where I'm going to do the Dragon Eye and the rhinestones on it. So, so far we've gotten the scales on and the mica painted on and the first layer of epoxy over the cup. Now I am going to take the piece of vinyl that I have put some uh, glow-in-the-dark mica on that I'm afraid is probably going to be too dark actually because I have clear water slide and clear water slide needs to be on something that's white or a light color in order to show through well because it's, it's see-through. Um, it's got a white backing on it now so you can't really tell that. So I'm afraid that when I did the glow-in-the-dark on here it's going to make this not show up very well on the cup. So, But I'm going to still go ahead and try it anyways because, well, I'm stubborn like that and I want to see if it works anyway. And I have this water over here that I'm going to put the eye in. I have discovered that the woman I got my water slides from, her water slides are significantly better quality than the ones that I bought myself, which is why I have her make them for me now instead of me doing it myself with, with my printer. Um, so they slide off really fast in the water, as opposed to mine where I had to keep them sitting in there for a while. Everybody says leave it sit for about a minute. Not hers. They're fast. So this is this was just a white piece of vinyl that I painted over using acrylic medium and glow mica mixed in it. And it was a blue colored glow mica. Let me see. Yep, you can see this. I'm just going to stick that in the water. Sorry about the squeaky sound. I have three other dragon scale cups on the turner and the, it's on my multi-turner which is kind of noisy so that's all that grinding sound that you guys hear in the background. So some people, when they do this, you'll see them slide it off and then face it upright onto the cup, but you don't actually have to do that. You can just leave it like this and then slide it this way instead. Oops. Except I think it doesn't like adhering to my paint. And this is actually not as, as bad as I thought it was going to turn out being. I seem to have ripped my water slide at some point. Not since I was doing this video, but beforehand, because I just now noticed a little crackling on there. And I don't like the way that is looking. So I may not even use this because it's got that You can see right there where it's torn. That's not good. I'm not even going to use it, which is sad. I don't even know when I ripped it, honestly. But it's okay, because I have other eyeballs. <laughs> I keep a stash. I'm going to pause this so you guys aren't having to watch me go through it. Alright, so I have sheets of eyeballs and dragons and all kinds of stuff. I ordered those from Imagine Dream Create. She prints them on a laser printer for you. 
and charges you by the sheet so you can choose a whole bunch of images. I ordered a bunch from her at the same time just so that I would always have them on hand. I do have my, like I said, I have my own water slide paper and my own printer so I can do it myself, but it's not my most favorite project to do. All right, eyeball take two. I might have just actually ripped it while I was doing this when I lifted it up to show it to you guys and I just didn't realize it with my fingernail. I'm not sure. Or when I was playing with it in the water because I don't have patience. actually kind of like when I mess up like that when I'm on video that way when you have something go wrong you don't feel as frustrated and you realize that people who have been doing stuff for a while have the same problems we're not perfect people okay I'm actually gonna do it this way this time actually I think that's how I did rip it by pushing it it's not ready to come off the paper yet I was being impatient, just like I'm being impatient now. And I just told you all that hers are faster than what mine are. Oh, now it's lifting. The last time I used the water slides from her, I had them in the water while I was working on something else, and then the water slide was completely floating separate from the, uh, the backing, so I was doing the O. Oh. Well. I guess they don't need to be in the water that long. Oop. It seems the water slides are not wanting to cooperate with me when I'm on the video with you guys today. So I'm doing it this way. I don't have a squeegee thingy that I've seen some people use. They have these nice handy dandy silicone doodads. I'm going to use this to smooth it out so I'm not putting too much pressure with my fingers. I wet this while before. I, you probably just noticed that I dabbed it in the water. So I can get these little wrinkles out but not mess up my inks. Really the only thing you have to worry about with messing it up is when you bend it too much and then you make the uh, the, water, the, the water slide wrinkles and then it messes up your image. And you'll notice that I very tiny I have I did that right across through here. I'm not even stressing it. A lot of people would scrap it at this point, but I have learned that my perfectionism with stuff like that does me no good. I know it's there. You know it's there because you're watching the video. Is anybody else going to notice it? Are they going to care? Probably not. Okay. I'm going to leave that alone for a while, get rid of my water thing, and make sure I don't have water down here because I'm about to start messing with this area. I'm not drying off the top because I don't want to mess up and make any more wrinkles than I already have going on there. Now part of the reason I have wrinkles is because I put that vinyl underneath of it to make sure that you could see the eye and so the vinyl is lifted up higher than what the cup is and so where the, it's overlapping that's why you see wrinkles on the edging here. What I'm planning on doing is putting a layer of Mod Podge 
on the edges here because I've noticed that whenever I take Mod Podge and I go outward with it on my water slides, it makes less of a seam whenever I do the next layer of epoxy because I really cannot stand seeing the edge of my water slides on the um, cup when I'm done with my th thing. I want it to be seamless. I want it to look like it's actually part of the background and not a plastic sticker over top of it. And I found that blending the Mod Podge kind of eliminates that a little bit. All right, switching from the eye to the rhinestones, I'm using E6000, my Silhouette Pick Me Up tool, and then I have these rhinestones and I'm using the top one. I try to use this bottom one because it's kind of got a purpley yellowy color with it, but I put it up against the cup and I didn't really like it the way it looked, so I went back to my original colors. Actually, I already have a pile that I made down here. So my intent was to do two side by side in this part and then go dip, uh, to just one so it's going to split going up that way. And I may not go all the way up just because I'm afraid my hand might rub onto the eye and cause issues. So for now, I at least wanted to get this part down so that I can show you what I do. I have never seen anybody do this with rhinestones. I've only ever seen it with the zipper. I'm sure there's somebody somewhere who's done this already. But it's my first time coming up with this. I haven't even done the zipper yet. I, I ordered zippers and they never showed up. So here we are with rhinestones instead. Actually, the company that ordered the zippers from went out of business. So I will never get that order because I tried to contact them and there's no way to contact them. Good thing I didn't spend a lot of money on it. Normally, I do not like to do rhinestones on a cup that I'm going to epoxy more over top of. I feel like it doesn't really do well for the rhinestones, but these are a different type of rhinestone. They come to a straight point at the top instead of having a cut. See, I have... These are kind of... They're cut along the edges, and then they have a flat top. And this one is round so it comes to a point at the top so my hope is that the epoxy over top of it's not going to destroy the shine on them plus I'm not really going for shine so much as I'm just using the rhinestones as a border anyway so not a huge deal this is just a figure it out as I go cup anyway And then hopefully, by watching me with my trials and errors, it gives you ideas on how to do things your way. Because I know my way is not the easiest. I just have my isms, just like other people who do their videos have their own way of doing things too.
Oops. And that is as far as I'm going to go while on video. Just because I don't want to bore you to death. This is dry enough that I can put my Mod Podge on it and smooth it out. And this is, you see it's all runny, this is actually watered down Mod Podge. This is what I use when I do the scales. Instead of using the thicker, so it's not as runny inside that thing. I just dilute it a little bit. I've found that it's easier to get it on the scales and everything, and doing it that way too. I also actually use the diluted with the fabric when I do fabric cups because I think it absorbs into the fabric and I have to use less Mod Podge overall. I have to do a fabric tutorial with you guys. I do a lot of fabric cups. I actually might have a slight fabric hoarding problem, especially if it's Game of Thrones or Alice in Wonderland. The problem with that is not everybody else has my Alice in Wonderland and Game of Thrones fascination, so <laughs> I keep winding up making myself my own cups. And I have a ton of Game of Thrones fabric for when I start, you know, doing that whole sewing thing that I keep talking about that I still haven't been brave enough to do. Actually, part of the problem is I don't have the space because I'm have all of my space taken up with this stuff. But I'm basically going to have an entire wardrobe of nothing but Game of Thrones. I did send some fabric to a clothing maker. Actually, I have two different uh, um, I don't want to call them seamstresses because they're they're not they're more than seamstresses. They actually make clothing um, with custom fabrics and stuff. Well, I have one set of Game of Thrones with one of my friends who actually lives here in Florida, and her business is called Snazilla Baby, and she is making me a top with one of my Game of Thrones fabrics, and then I have another set of fabrics with another friend who is. Um, She's making me a bathing suit for my cruise in December for my retirement. And her business, for some reason, is evading my brain. I don't know why. I'm like in her page all the time, so I don't know why. drawing a blank. And I don't want to not tell you what her business is. So rad apparel. I cannot believe. I forgot that. So, so as an S-E-W, rad apparel. And I'm going to put a link to both of their um, websites in the comments here since I mentioned them so that you guys can see what kind of awesome work they both do. They're, they both are very good at what they do, but what, how their styles are so vastly different is it's just amazing to me how they do what they do. I can only aspire to even be half as good as they are at sewing and creativity in that department. All right, 
So what I'm doing right now while I'm pushing on these is just trying to get those creases less visible. And that's what the Mod Podge is there for, to kind of help push that through. Alrighty, y'all. I'm going to stop rambling and stop working on this so um, we can continue on with the rest of the video later when I get done putting the rhinestones on. Hello, my most favorite is peeps. All right, we've got the very last bit of this. Of course, it's going to go the opposite direction. I wanted it to. Tumbler. The dragon scales. I am putting this la next layer of epoxy. This may be the last layer, but I have a feeling it's not going to be. We're going to have one more layer, I think, after this one. All of the rhinestones are on. The eyeball is on. My alignment over here with that rhinestone doesn't quite go all the way up like I would like it to, but turning the perfectionist in my head off and ignoring it so that I don't go crazy. I am using a medicine cup and I have it marked off at one teaspoon and one DSP right underneath of it. I'm going to use the, the bottom line for part A and part B. So it's going to be not quite two teaspoons, oops, sorry, not teaspoons, tablespoons. What I'm doing here. My part A has little chunkies in it, so what I have to do is hit it with the heat and then stir it around to get rid of the chunkies in it. I don't really know why it does that. I'm told that it's because of the temperature, but my temperature in this house, or not the house, but my craft room, stays constant. And I live in Florida, so I don't know why it's doing that, because I'm not. it's not cold. I hate cold, so it's definitely not an issue for me to have warm room to be friendly with the epoxy. But if I have chunks that come out, I just hit it with the heat and then it makes the chunks go away. Getting the epoxy in. So, hopefully, when I'm done with this, <laughs> I haven't tested the eyeball yet to see if the glow in the dark actually works in it. Oops, I probably should have checked that before I even put it on to the cup, but oh well. I'm not going to cry if it doesn't glow. I think it looks pretty cool without the glow anyway. But of course that means all of my efforts <laughs> to uh, paint the vinyl underneath was for nothing, but whatever. It's not exactly what I wanted it to look like, but then again, I don't think any of my projects turn out exactly what I wanted them to look like. So. Not a huge deal. Somebody somewhere is going to love it.
here. My daughter just got home from school. I could hear the, the gate close outside the door, which means my husband's probably going to walk in through here and be all loud and noisy in a second because he's notorious for interrupting my videos. <laughs> having a hard time putting epoxy over the rhinestones. It's just not because it's difficult to do, but in it's an emotional difficulty. <laughs> Why are you putting epoxy over a rhinestone? <laughs> 